Remember the Ravage Star campaign we did a few months ago? The company we've partnered with to make the miniatures, Lazy Squire Games, have made their reprint live on GameFound for Wild Ascent, the game we're playing in this video. Link in description and pinned in the comments to grab your copy of this fast-paced, wildly lush and gorgeous tabletop game with fantastically detailed miniatures. Did I oversell that? I might be a little biased. They did, after all, sculpt the Ravage Star minis, and they look stellar. Hey there, Wargamers, and welcome to our second part of our two-part series for Wild Descent. I am Luca from MiniWargaming.com, joined by Josh, who will be standing in for Phil, the Glacial Geek, who was in the previous episode. Today, we will be continuing the demo of Levon Rising, a specific narrative campaign set in Wild Descent. We play and call it work. If you didn't watch the previous video, I bid you go check it out. You'll be able to find it by clicking the link down below in the description. As well as if you want more in-depth knowledge of the mechanics of the game, Dave and myself had recorded some Wild Ascent Let's Play series a bit ago, which will also be linked down below if you want to get a tutorial of how this game plays before you watch this narrative demo. Now I'm going to explain a little bit what's going on here narratively from the previous episode to this one here. Now if you haven't checked out Levon Ryzen episode 1 demo, go click on the link down below because there will be spoilers and you've been warned. In the previous episode, Phil and I, well, we lost. So we had to play it again off camera to continue the narrative and get to where we are here. But I have Josh filling in today for that episode or for this episode, I should say. Now, in the previous one, we had Drusus, who was a member of our gladiatorial team as we fought Coralt, um, execute him at the end while Coralt was conjuring magic. Though he did seem to have another agenda as he was turning around to execute one of our members before he was struck down by lightning from Veraclea, and uh, she was none too happy about that. So Drusus was not to be trusted, as it turns out. And there's a whole political agenda going on here that we're very ignorant of. So boom, we continue our story and we go into the dungeons again to continue our unfortunate lives as they are. And this is where this episode leads off, where it's just another day and another challenge. And the whole team's getting ready to step out in the arena. We don't really know what we're fighting or what it will be against whatsoever. Uh, but we start catching rumors and a little bit of wind of what it might be as the day progresses. And it turns out that it sounds like Veraclea somehow got her hands on some dragon eggs and has been cultivating the young for a little bit of showmanship. So the challenge today is dragons. And here there be dragons. We have our familiar adventurers here in the middle. We got Nihilus, Torvar, Galea, and Zarin all in the middle surrounded by what seem to be four dragons. How, oh how, did Varclea get dragons, I wonder? So we have, for anyone curious, two onyx dragons, boop boop, marked one and two. Uh, you might not be able to see the die, that's mostly for uh, Josh and myself here, as Josh will be filling in for Phil for this yes, game. Yes, Phil it's had to Josh. return to the United States. <laughs> Phil, Phil. So, I am now taking over. <laughs> exactly we called it a that. ringer. So you'll, you'll miss the sweet uh, voice acting of Phil in this game. You'll just have to just deal with Josh and I instead. I guess all the narrative part's already done. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we got our Onyx Dragons, and we have our Aurelian Dragons, marked one and two. And the scenario is simple. Kill the dragons! Well with maybe a twist. There are also six altars on in, in the arena here. We got three of them there, three of them there. Uh, they are all numbered, and that's gonna be important for the encounter deck. When that comes up at the beginning of every round, I'm gonna draw two of the six cards here, and a charge will be placed on an altar. The seekers here, the players, the gladiators in the middle, can just simply walk over the altar. They do not need to end their move there and pick up a charge, and that will give their next attack plus three uh, base damage. Now, if an altar already has a charge counter on it, it was not collected, and then the following round has another charge counter put on it, it will overwhelm the altar and it'll explode and do two damage to the eight squares around it. Um, assigning damage to it right through all, all defenses. Uh, other than that though, that's pretty much it. As far as Josh and I know, we're supposed to kill these four dragons. Uh, which is a shame. I mean, a dragon is a very majestic creature, and it's kind of sad. These don't look as majestic, though. No, I guess not, but... I guess, and they are kind of, like, tiny and starved-looking, as opposed to... Compared to, like, the dragons of legend and all that good stuff. But, yeah, we're ready to go. That's that's the scenario. Uh, there will be a twist later on, which you will all see. 
uh, and uh, we're good to go. We get to activate first because there's no there's no restrictions on that one. So Josh and I are gonna figure out who we want to activate first, and uh, we'll get the show on the road. I guess I'll give you a, a look at the stats of the combatants, uh, the enemies we're fighting. Here we see an Aurelian Dragon at level three. It'll have nine health, two physical, and three magical defense and a defensive passive where it'll poop out a little bit of the lava after it's attacked, and then Frenzy. And then here we have the Onyx Dragon. The defenses are swapped around, and it has Revenge instead of Lava Breath, where it gets to retaliate, and it has like one more health. And we will show you Torvar. Now all of our gladiators here are a little bit more experienced, so they have unlocked their first skill. As you can see on the right, he'll have a Royal Distraction. And then we bought a glass shield for him as well. It's the one time used to negate up to five damage. We're gonna start in defensive stance. We're not gonna make the same mistakes as last game. Now Lys, his sister, will have Royal Destruction as her first unlock skill. And she took a couple of consumable items, a Toxic Mist and a Blessed Bottle. Zaurin up next, a new passive, Servant of the Gods, plus one magical defense. So it just has three instead of two, which is uh, always active. And she will have a Vial of Luck. Lastly, Galea, Galia. Sorry on the pronunciation there. With Blessed Blade, which is uh, an active ability she can do now. Uh, every other turn, she can uh, en engulf one of her swords in a flame, or holy flame, and attack the enemy with extra damage and more range as well. And we took the Ring of Balance on her, which makes the most sense, because she's got the least amount of health. I guess we'll just have Zal Rin go, and go straight ahead. Boop, bump, bump. Boop. Smash! So there's two base damage on the hammer smack, but we get to throw five additional dice to try and augment it. Ooh, we actually have four extra damage. Now, Zaurin has a special that stuns if we roll three specials. In this case, we only got two. Physical defense of three on that Onyx Dragon. It'll take three in total, which will bring it down to seven health remaining. I forgot the altars. I gotta resolve the altars. We'll draw two cards from here, and it'll be altar number two and altar number four. That'll be the altar right beside Zaurin. And this altar over here near Torvar and that Aurelian Dragon. And after that, the dragons go. Well, they try to go. First activation, we'll have an Aurelian Dragon. Aurelian Dragon 1 will activate with that uh, breath attack. It'll target the nearest enemy, which is Torvar. And careful advance 3 means it doesn't move at all. It'll just sit there with a range of 3 and attack. It's 3 base magical damage plus 3 attack dice. 3 plus 2, so 5 magical damage. Currently in defensive stance, he puts his shield up and only takes a few damage instead. Reduces it by two, because he only has one magical defense normally. Torvar will go to 22. Nihilus, sister to Torvar, will activate next. She has the ability to potentially immobilize enemies, and I have a sneaking suspicion that the Onyx Dragons here are melee combatants. So we're going to turn for one move, go two, turn around for three, and she's going to bomb a shot down here and hopefully immobilize it. Four attack dice. Oh, I didn't get the special, but we do do three extra damage on top of the two. So five physical damage, which means this dragon takes two. Now the dragons. It's going to be an onyx dragon, the furthest enemy. So this one is going to do a swift advance towards the furthest enemy, which would be Zalrin. Now uh, Josh and I are not going to be playing hard mode, as uh, that humbled myself last time I played, as I lost horribly. And I'd be willing to, but Lucas seems <laughs> terrified of it. I am, I am. I'm scarred. I am scarred of hard mode. Hard mode being, uh, so swift advance towards the furthest enemy would be Zaurin. Now we know that the dragon will not be able to make it in four moves to Zaurin, and thus it won't be able to attack. So swift would then make it the next closest target that's the furthest away, any of them with the lowest defense, so it'll go attack one of them instead. So it means they're always attacking, which means they're always crumping, and it means we're always dying. And that was, that was hard. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and it'll end its move there. Trying to get towards Zalrin. No attacks. It was like a charge attack with the horn. Trying to have a knockback effect as well, which is kind of cool. And that is it for that Onyx Dragon. All right, well, Galia's right there. So I've got to roll my momentum dice? Oh, yes. On activation, she can... Uh, she always gets to roll momentum dice and augment stats or heal. Uh, the only people that are hurt are Torvar, I guess? I guess she'll go ahead and heal Torvar, bringing him back up to 23. Nice. And uh, she gets to do her full move. Choosing not to move, we're gonna swing at this Onyx Dragon right ahead of us. I guess we'll do Blessed Blades just to get some extra base damage. It just, yeah, it augments it by two, right? Yeah. Yeah, plus two base damage on her base damage of one. one. Oh, it's a magical attack as well on her. 
Definitely a lot more effective against the Onyx Dragon, so I'm uh, that's a good call. Oop. And it'll do an extra three damage on top of that. So is it doing six magically? Uh, it's doing six. That's, oh, four damage to number one. Bringing number one to four. Now, they're easy enough to kill, but they have a rule called Frenzy. When they die, all the other dragons get empowered. So we have to be careful not to kill. Uh, tr try and spread the damage out. You know, classic tactics. Kill them all at the same time. AoE them down at the end. Then, dragons attack. Onyx dragon. Oh boy, more horn stuff. Advance four. Most adjacent enemies. I'm going to try to move past Zaurin because they get the, to the most adjacent enemies. It'll go one, two, three, four. This is going to try and surge right past Zaurin. It has to try and get to the nearest cl uh, cluster of enemies. And last pick, we have the Prince Torvar, who will... Uh, I guess we'll just go for the Aurelian Dragon. We'll move forward and try and skewer it with the Trident. He does have Royal Distraction now, which gives him plus one base damage when attacking a creature from its frontal arc. Like a tanking mechanic. It's supposed to line up nicely with Nihilus, where she gets bonus damage attacking the rear of it, but all the rears are hidden. I forgot that Torvar's got a fancy shield. Whenever he's attacked, he rolls three dice. Every special reduces the damage he takes by one. I got no specials, though. He can't change the past. So we are going to go ahead and attack now. He's got three attacks with three base damage. Uh, we do uh, one extra damage, and that's, uh, that's it. We do four damage. Well, five, because we're attacking from the front. The first one will take three and go to there. Dragon activation. It'll be an Aurelian Dragon. The enemy that is nearest. Well, this Aurelian Dragon's gonna go breathe hot breath all over Galea here. Now, it is a careful advance three. It's only a range two attack. But to get within range to attack and line of sight, that Onyx Dragon is blocking it. So with the move three, the Dragon's gonna have to end here. And bleh, and just do a little bit of a puke of lava right on Galea there. And that's gonna put this token underneath her square. Which, in addition to assigning two damage for getting hit by lava, she's now standing in lava, and she'll take an additional two damage. So she gets uh, four damage to her, which brings her all the way down to 14 from 18. And uh, if she ends the round there, which this is the last activation of the round, so this is kind of funny, the lava token is removed at the end of every round as it solidifies into... I'm just going to maybe Obsidian, who knows, uh, some sort of solid rock. And uh, the, the model there is immobilized to the ground as they try and struggle to break free. So it's now the end of the round. She is now immobilized. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> That's funny timing. And now, Galea does have a ring of balance here, but that only comes into play if she has less, uh, less health than her current attacker, which is not the case here. And uh, that is, that's, that's it. That's the end of the round. On to round two. With a new round comes new altar powers. So we have, oh hell, <laughs> two and three. This is two, it blows up, but no one's adjacent to it, and no tokens are placed on it, and then three is over here. So there's these like little exploding nodes we have to watch. I was worried it was this one here, and it would have hit both of us. All right, let's go Gallia first, and we'll start off with some momentum dice. Oh yeah, so she has a heal. Ooh, she could fortify someone and heal. She could choose any mm. one of us. She'll heal herself, she'll go up to 15 Boop. with the heal, and then she can give someone uh, plus one base damage for this entire round. And then that'll go on Zaurin, so Zaurin's attacks will be plus one damage. And then Galia, she can't do her blessed blade attack this round, because no. it, it goes on cooldown every time she uses it, and the token gets flipped over, and then at the end of her activation, it gets flipped over to the active side again. So every other round, she can attack with her blessed blades. I think I'm just gonna swing at the Aurelian that, oh no, he's got better. He's got one more mm. better magical, better magical mm. defense, so. Up to, oh, plus he'll, he'll, he poops out lava where he gets attacked from when he moves. <laughs> we'll, we'll hit the Onyx Dragon, whatever, screw that guy. He's only got four health left, let's see if we can put him down. She does how much base damage? One. One, okay, well it's all magical. She does, okay. Oh, Ooh. she rolled a special. She has a... Heal all allies for one. Mysterious... Benefits. Yeah, mysterious benefits. So every special she rolls, she can heal all allies for one. So the only hurt allies would be herself and Torvar. Boop, boop. And she does two whole damage to this dragon, which is magical. But he's got two magical defense, so zero damage. And then her immobilization is removed. To be then reapplied later, maybe. And then dragon activation. We have Aurelian Dragon number one. The ally with the highest HP lost will get healed. Hard time getting to it though, so it's advance four. It's not swift advance. Again, swift advance lets it move diagonally. So one, two, three, four. Oh gosh. <laughs> it is way too far away to heal that dragon. So that's all that dragon will do. 
Bowerin will go next. Bum. Turning for one to slam at the side of the Honest Dragon as it tries to rush past her. Doing this because the Honest Dragons retaliate if you attack them from behind, which is uh, not ideal. So you have plus one base damage. I know. Yeah, you need another die there. Oh, you do. You're hogging right. the dice, You throw Luka. five dice. That's right. My bad, my bad. And it's going to be bam. three more damage on top of that. It'll be six in total, leaving this dragon at one. They are getting... Oh, no, because you, well, you got to play the defense, two. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, defense of two. Or of three, so it'll take three less damage. I'm like, that seems like way too much damage. So both the both the honest dragons are at four remaining health. Let's go dragons. Aurelian dragon. Self. Halt. Oh, no. That's too funny, dude. He literally just pukes fire a lava all in front of him and he engulfs all these fields with lava. I had a third one. And goes right under Galia, Galea there, and that means she takes two damage. And at the end of the round, she'll be immobilized again. Beautiful. And then it mo moves this creature two fields away from all enemies. But when it moves two fields, it just backs up two. It doesn't have to do a proper movement, it just gets repositioned. For our se season opportunity, he's gonna change his token from defensive stance to aggressive stance, giving him minus one defense, but plus one base damage. And he's gonna try and get this dragon. So he's gonna go one, two, three, four. He's got a move of four. He's gonna attack the back of this dragon, doing an additional three base damage because he's in aggressive stance and he's behind it. And uh, it's gonna be an additional two damage on top of that. So it's gonna be eight damage minus two for six. Straight up murderates it. Boom, just skewered it and it just falls over dead, leaking lava. Which it literally does leak lava whenever it's attacked. And then we go with Onyx Dragon. Well, it's gonna do something with his mouth. The highest enemy with the highest physical defense is Torvar. So we're getting pretty lucky with that. Just the dragon witnessed what just happened. He's gonna ignore this fight. One, sorry, one, two, three, four, and move towards Torvar. All we have left is Nihilus now, so we are gonna activate her. And I want to, this guy's not hurt, so I'm going to work on fighting him. I'm going to go one, two, three, turn, and then just bomb a shot down at him, range four. Two base damage, plus two, and it's immobilized as well. And bleed, because she's got barbed arrows. Takes two damage, because it reduces it by, by that much, but he's now bleeding and immobilized. And then another dragon's going to activate, it'll be an Aurelian dragon. Aurelian dragon will take a damage, because he's bleeding when he activates. Going down to six. And then it will target the nearest enemy uh, and then attack with the tail, potentially stunning it. So we're gonna go. Was it immobilized? Oh, he is immobilized. Oh, that's right. He's not. Oh, that's so big. He tries to attack with his tail, but he's stuck. He's got Barbaro pinning him to the ground. So the immobilization goes away and no attack happens. Neat. That'll be the end of the second round. All the lava tokens solidify. And uh, poor Galea there. She's yeah. happy being there. She's uh, stunned. She's mobilized again. New round means new power. Number six and number four. Number four explodes, but number six gains the power, which I might go pick up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and reserve uh, <laughs> resolve Galia first. Yeah, just to get this out of the way. Huzzah. Heal and bonus damage. Put the bonus damage over there. And she'll heal herself. Back up to 50. Yeah. And she cannot move, so her speed is set to zero, which means she can only attack the three squares in front of her as she's trying desperately to free her feet from the uh, hardened lava there. And uh, yeah, she, that's her turn, unfortunately. She's free now, though, which is awesome. And then we flip over. Onyx Dragon. Well, that looks ominous. Well, that's kind of funny. That targets the nearest enemy, activating Onyx Dragon number one first. So let's carefully advance three. It's going to move away from her to do this. I don't know if it can do it, though. One two, three, yeah, yeah, boom. So he's gonna go there and he's gonna breathe fire down this line. It'll be these three tiles engulfed in lava. And we know that means, that means Galia is taking four damage. Or actually, this is only two damage because it's not damage in addition to the lava. So you only ever take two from the lava or standing on it. So one, two, three, and two damage to her. I just, I'm loving this dude. She's having a hard time with these dragons. It's about to get worse. It's about to get a little worse for her. Well, let's just go Zalrin and see if I can kill this one. He's got four health remaining, and you have an extra base damage. Now, you could try to attack her from behind. I think I'm going it, to, yeah. And kill it before it retaliates, yeah, to get two extra damage. So, so one, boop, two, boop, three, boop. and attacking it from behind. And this will be two damage plus three more. So, a total of five. A uh, total of six damage minus three doesn't quite kill it. One away from being dead. I'll pop the vial of luck and re-roll these two. Re-roll these two dice. Ah! Enough! 
to smite this dragon. Boom. If anyone wants a reminder, the Vial of Luck is a, it's a two, you can use it twice in the entire scenario, and it lets you reroll up to three of your attack dice. So we chose uh, two of the blanks, naturally. And uh, that's it for Zalrin. Now we flip a card. And it's gonna be Onyx Dragon. Yeah, so he's gonna activate again, and we know it's gonna go towards Torvar, so they'll move for one, and, and then towards their frontal arc. Advance to there, and I believe this is a range. Oh, it's only a range one attack, so we avoid that attack. Good, good job, Torvar, hanging out way over there. Speaking of Torvar, we're just gonna go one, two, three, four, and we are going to stay in offensive stance. Because we're attacking from the front arc, we do get plus one uh, base damage because of Royal Distraction, making it uh, four, five base damage plus, ooh, six, seven. Reducing by three, that's enough to kill it. He's got four health left. Blah. It means the Aurelian Dragon will go next. Because we shuffle up the deck, we have to remove all the dead combatants, and that would be the Onyx Dragon. So we are going to attack the nearest with a uh, sweet a potential stun. But he is bleeding, so he'll go down to five health. I wonder if we could take them all out. It will advance to get in range and do a tail swipe. It's going to throw four attack dice at Gallia. And on specials, times two, it'll stun. Otherwise, it just does three damage against her physical defense. Takes two damage, going down to 11. Okay, and that's it for him. He's done. My list will go. Turn for one, two, three. Pick up the charge, if I can. Boop, and then turn around again for her fourth move. She moves up to five if she wants to, but this is her maximum range for her shot. One, two, three, four, yep, and there's nothing blocking line of sight. And because she's got the charge counter, her next attack does three bonus damage. Be base damage five, plus these dice. So it'll be base damage seven, which is reduced by two down to five, because it only has two physical damage, which does end its life. Look at that. Not so mighty are these majestic creatures. Our gladiators enjoy a very brief respite before they notice a great shadow looming from above. Uh-oh. From the skies descends quite the real foe. Boom. An actual fully grown dragon. This mighty creature shows up in those four squares, knocking back any uh, gladiators or enemies. And the, anyone who is knocked back suffers two damage, so poor uh, Galia there goes to nine. And uh, yeah, he's gonna land in the lava fields there. I think he actually takes damage from the lava fields, which is helpful, but he was always supposed to show up at the beginning of round four. Now, we do get a little bit of a bonus for clearing out all the enemies immediately. Uh, if he's forced in, any rounds early, he'll suffer, he'll be assigned three damage for every round early he was summoned. In this case, it's only one round early. So he'll start off with 37 health remaining. Let's just take a peek at this bad boy. Starts with 40 health, three physical and magical defense, unstoppable, he's immune to all status effects, and he is immovable. He cannot be knocked back. Just double checking the rules for lava and the dragons themselves are immune to it as they created insides of themselves. So it makes sense there. And the best part about all this, before the round ends, the dragon immediately activates. Oh, what pray tell random instinct deck will the infernal dragon do? Nearest charge. Oh, he's gonna go for the charges? That's not good. Advances four towards the nearest charge. So he's gonna flip around and go one, two, three and pick up the charge. So he faces away and quickly goes to consume the charge, which is luckily for Galea there, or Galia. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call her Galia for the rest of this, to keep it at least consistent. Sorry if I'm driving anyone insane. And he'll store this on his card. For every one of these the Infernal Dragon has, he will gain plus one attack dice whenever he attacks, making his attack more powerful. Though if he gets a third one, he immediately summons an Onyx Dragon to support him in battle with eight health instead of their usual 10. That is the last activation of the round as all of the heroes have already activated. So these go away. Now, funny enough, look who's not immobilized because <laughs> she got knocked out of it. And two new altars, two, as well as three. That's that altar there and the one with the dragon. If any of the Seekers start on the altars, it dissipates and the energy doesn't work. But the dragon, it still spawns on him. So if he goes to move, he'll pick it up as he moves. So let's put this like kind of beside him for now. He's, he's probably going to get it. There's a good chance he's going to get it. I think we want to go with my list first. So she can put a shot at the dragon's back while he's exposed for now. That way she can try to utilize that bonus damage. She actually gets plus three bonus damage from Royal Destruction. So... Uh, where's four? It's like right there. So she'll move to there. One, two, yeah. 
go there. She'll do five base damage because of Royal Destruction, as well as, ooh, three more, so eight base damage. But the dragon itself is immune to uh, all the effects, which would be bleed and immobilize here. Dragon reduces that eight damage down to five. We got it at seven right here, just to represent 37, so it's at 32 health remaining. And then, uh, you know what? There's a 32 way up here. Now the dragon's at 32 health left. Then the dragon will activate. Infernal dragon, looks like he's about to make someone hot. Most enemies in frontal arc, wild. Well, he's gonna go right towards Gallia because she's the nearest uh, with the advanced four. So he's gonna pick up that charge counter, turn around completely. That'd be one, two, three, four. And he's gonna cover all four of these squares in lava. That means Gallia takes two and she'll be a mobile. Oh, she can move still. Though. She can move still. She can still move. Bless. There we go. Oof, hot. Now, luckily she has the ring of balance. So whenever she gets attacked by an enemy with more health than her, that enemy will suffer the magical effects of the ring being assigned to two damage. He's down to 30, 30 health now. Yes. All right, now it's our pick. Before anything unfortunate yeah, happens. Yeah, I'm gonna to activate Galio. All right, so she gets to roll her two momentum dice, which will be a heal, and someone gets extra speed. That would probably be good for a Zalring, because she's very slow. So I'm gonna go up to eight health on Galia there. I'm gonna assign the extra speed to Galia. Boop. So go. She does take two One. damage starting her move in the tile, though. Boom, boom. So she's down to six. Uh, two. Three, four, and then five. five. Yeah, Can't... no, I didn't get behind you. Mm. You could just turn. You could turn five from here and attack the side of the dragon, if you wanted to, or keep running. Up to you. Yeah, whatever. I'll just swing from here. Did you want to use the blessed blade? Yeah, I may as well. May as well. Plus two bonus damage. Now it doesn't really matter. It's Actually, just... knowing the extra speed, maybe I won't. I roll it up. Let's see what we get. Yeah. Extra three damage. After everything is said and done, the Infernal Dragon goes down to 27 health. Let's see what he wants to do. Okay, big claw attack. Mm. The most adjacent enemies. And, uh, okay. Oh, that's an aggressive move. He's going to take to the skies, flying advance five. He's going to try and land in a square that would target the most adjacent enemies, and that would be these four squares here. That would hit Zalrin and uh, Galia, attacking both of Josh's characters. Because he won't be able to reach, if he goes there, won't be able to reach both Nihilus and... Uh, a Galia, so he'll turn for one, take to the skies, two, three, four, and then turn to there, and then attack <laughs> from behind, and Zaurin. So this gets a bonus two attack dice because of the two charge counters on the dragon, so it's a bonus, it's base damage two, so it's four damage with knockback two. We knock back two, boom, boom. But because that was from her, uh, from behind on Galia, she'll take an extra two damage. So she'll suffer six physical damage minus her physical defense, which is. Uh, she's got one left. She's got one health left after that. Oh, she's fine. That's, health is just a resource. And then the knockback two would be boom, boom on Zaurin. And four physical damage on Zaurin, which I believe she has no physical defense. No. She's all magical defense. She goes to 27. Before that, we forgot we rolled a special on her Blessed Blade attack. Whenever she rolls specials, everyone gets to heal one, which will only be her and, I believe, Torvar. Yeah. Boom, because Zaurin has not taken damage when that resolved. All right, Mr. Fancy Dragon. Oh, then that's another attack. That's right, the Ring of Balance. Haha! <laughs> Look at all the damage Galia is doing. Torvar will bravely charge the dragon while going into defensive stance and running forward. One, two, three. Stab! Base damage because we're attacking from the front. Plus one. Oh, yeah. We do two damage because of the defenses. I'm in defensive stance, it's actually minus one attack dice. If I... Okay, same result, there we go. Gosh, the dragon goes so often. Oh, a wing, no! Enemy furthest, flying advance eight. Man, this is a fast move. Turn for one, takes to the skies. Two, three, four, five, six, lands. Boom, seven. And just absolutely destroys Nihilus. This does three base damage, and normally only five attack dice, but because of the two charge counters, this many. Oh look, it's pretty much maximum damage. And oh look, we rolled two times specials, which ignore all armor. So, I, I, you know what? She didn't see this attack coming from a mile away. Let me tell you, that's wild. It's a big hit. She has 12 health remaining. Boom. Hmm. The Zellerin's way over there. You can uh, walk up I'm and pick gonna, the charge. I'm yeah. going to. I hope, I hope this is what? One. One. <laughs> two. two. Three. I hope this is the rest of the encounter. I hope it's like next, <laughs> I hope next turn the dragon just scraps with those two, and then Zauron goes, doesn't attack, and then does that, that same move to the other side yep. of the board. <laughs> Last end of the round. These all get cleaned up.
New round, seeing where the charge counters go. We have to be careful with these ones. That goes on six, and that goes on three. So six and three. Again, if this dragon gets one more of those, the only way you can get them is with that one card where he actively seeks them out, or if he chases one of us and we so happen to be near it. So we have to be careful with that. Galio wants to go first to try and get yeah. those heals out. Swing! Ooh, we got a heal, and someone gets to move faster. Should we heal the one? Yeah, huh? she, she had two health, so she's going up to three. That means she can at least get hit by lava and survive. Let's move. We're gonna go one, two, three, four. That is behind us, these four squares that are behind it. Huzzah! We get bonus two damage on this attack. We allocated the speed to Zawa in there. So let's see if we get some specials, because he's heal. Can't do the Blessed Blade attack. Oh, we got special. Everyone heals one who is hurt, and this will do three extra damage. That'll do three total damage to the dragon, bringing it down to, oh, well, we're getting there. It's at 23, down to 20. And then everyone of ours heals one, Ooh. so one there, one here. Torvar's at full, and Zawarin goes up to 28. Ah, we're fine. We can beat up this dragon, no problem. We haven't seen two of the dragon cards, so let's figure this out. Infernal Dragon Angry. Self, halt, blind all enemies with, within a range of two. Oh. Blinds Galia. Sorry, yeah, Galia's blinded, so he can't see her, the wing. Galia's blinded, and so will be uh, Nihilus. Just minus two attack dice on their next activation. Not too bad at all. And it's our turn. It is our turn. Hmm. Well, she can go backwards, pick that up and then take a shot. I guess so, before the dragon does something weird. Moving five on Nihilus. So we'll turn around, run away. One, two, three, picking it up. Four, and then five. And then I will remember her attack will have two less attack dice. She gets three base damage more. So she'll be at base damage five and two attack dice. Two attack dice. Oh, one more damage. So six damage, again, only for three. Brings the dragon down to 17 health and the blind token goes away. The last Infernal Dragon card is going to be that enemy with the highest magical defense, that's Zaurin. This is a breath attack. It is a range of three, careful advance three. So we'll turn, uh, it'd be like one, two, and then it'll be an arc in range to do the attack. So it'll do the breath attack against Zaurin. It'll be five base damage plus four attack dice. And it'll be three extra damage on top of that. So it'll be eight damage against Zaurin's magic of three, I believe. Well, that'll be five damage to Zaurin, bringing Zaurin down to 23. And luckily the dragon did not roll special, otherwise that attack would have been large enough and powerful enough to splash over and hit Torvar for that same eight. Torvar will go next, because Zaurin's too far away to really do anything, so he's gonna cautiously approach the dragon. Turn for one, two, three, four, stab! Four base damage, because I'm attacking from the front, and I lose it. Okay, so we do one damage. Nice, good job, Torvar. Shoveled up the dragon deck, and it's gonna go ahead and do that breath attack again. It'll stay exactly where it is. Five base damage against Zaurin. To move over one, because Torvar is blocking line of sight, so it'll be one, two, three. And then be able to get better line of sight, and then attack from there. Five base damage, plus these attack dice. Oh, hey, look at, oh, it's, nothing's in range for the special, but it'll do nine damage this time, so it'll do six. And Zaurin, bring him down to a 17? 17. 17. And Zaurin gets to go. One, two, I guess that's enough to just start swinging. Yeah, it works from there, yep. The dragon was like, please attack me. I'm gonna uh, go. <laughs> Josh wants to move forward, but he's not uh, too sure. Uh, yeah, no, there's not a smart way to do this. I'm gonna try to stay middle as much as I can. <laughs> to stay the most middle with that character, I get that. This is base damage. Uh, base damage two, but I got the charge. Oh, yes. So base damage five. Six, seven, eight, nine damage for a total of six damage. That was a charge from the altar last turn. Very good hit. So it takes you down to 10. We're getting there. All right, Mr. Dragon, what do you feel like doing now? Oh, hey, heck yeah, most enemies in front of arc. Well, we got two. That's the best we're getting. And there's no way to really hit more than one enemy with this, so the dragon's gonna stay right there and bathe poor Torvar in fire, covering that two by two area in lava, which this should be the last activation. So we don't even have to put them down because they're gonna immediately dry up here and uh, immobilize Torvar. We will take two damage though. And uh, on defense, I don't think Torvar really gets any defense abilities against that one, just because he's like, he's not really taking damage from the dragon, he's just taking damage from the fields the dragon put down. It's like, dude, and become immobilized. So he's at 23. New round, number five, number one. And that means this altar will spawn a charge and so will that one, so all three of these are active. Well, let's just go with Torvar first and see what happens. He's immobilized right there, so I might as well take this opportunity to swing while I can before the dragon flies away. Or base damage, because I'm attacking from the front. All right, one, I do want to do a damage again. It's better than zero, you know? Damn. Mr. Dragon. This, oh, he's gonna go to the nearest charge. Oh no. We can make it though. Turns one. 
two, three, four. It's only advanced four. So shy. That's it. All right, Galia gets to go next. We get to resolve her momentum dice. I didn't do that big swing last time. We got just a heal. Is it going to on her out to five? Boop. Yeah, the healer is strong. Nice. I'm going to go one, one two, two, three. three. And then attack from behind. Yes. We get two extra base damage. Are we going to do the Blessed Blade attack? Yeah. Okay, so that's quite a bit of base damage. Five base damage plus two attack dice because blinded. So seven. It does four damage to the dragon. So we're bringing the dragon. One, two, three, four, five health left. And not blind anymore either on Galia. And then the Infernal Dragon will attack the most adjacent allies. Oh, wow, that's easy. The dragon will land right there because even though you could get three attacks from that square and three attacks from this square. It'll go for the highest health ones, which are these squares here. So the dragon is going to fly. Turn around. One, two, three. And then there, and attack all three of them. It's two base damage and two attack dice. So it does three physical damage and knock back two. That'll bring Galia down to two. Zaurin, who has no defense against that, will take three. And Torvar, who has three defense against that, will take nothing. But everyone gets thrown backwards too. That is an attack against Galia, so she will be doing two more damage. Oh wait, do you have, you still have less health. Yeah, you still, after the attack. I after do. the attack, yeah, that's true. Zaurin's turn next. There we go. One, two, swing. Swing! Base damage two. Oh wow, plus four, that's six damage. Three damage to the dragon, that's it. Zaurin puts the dragon down. Boom, the infernal dragon. Well, let's find out what happens to it. Yeah, that's it there. Zaurin just caves the dragon's head in with one mighty swing at a very opportune moment. So the dragon goes down. Varclea is not happy. In fact, how did Varclea even get a dragon, I wonder? 